In this video, I will be interviewing Sean Clark, the co-founder of High Level. And if you have no idea who I am, my name is Max Pearson. I run a free social media marketing agency course where I teach people to go from zero to at least $10,000 per month in 90 days or less. We have over 10,000 people in our community right now. I have over 140 reviews on Trustpilot and over 60 video testimonials as well. And in this video with Sean, we discuss how to improve your social media marketing agency by tapping into the SaaS model. So without further ado, let's just dive right into the interview. All right, Sean. A pleasure to have you here. Thank you so much for being here. I've been very excited about this interview. So thank you so much for taking your time and being here. For sure. Thanks for having me. Yeah. Awesome. So uh, basically for today, I planned some questions essentially for this interview. I had some questions that I prepared myself, but I also did a, uh, a post inside of our community essentially a couple of days ago when we had, it reached like 4,000 people. We had over like 400 <laughs> likes and over 100 questions in there. So people are very excited wow. about it. Uh, that's awesome. awesome yeah it's awesome and i'm not gonna ask you obviously 100 questions today but i have compiled like the, the best questions essentially yes um <laughs> but yeah if it's okay with you we can just dive right into it yeah fire away i love that awesome uh so and just to give you like a quick background about the people essentially or the audience it's mostly people are starting running and growing their first smma agency and um they're mainly uh, focusing on higher ticket sales or selling like services for between $1,500 to $5,000 per month. And they're currently on the $97 plan with high level or the $297 plan, and they completely love it. Um, and this interview will basically be part of a video where we talk more about the pro and the SaaS plan. Um, so sure. awesome. So I just want to begin with a couple of questions regarding like the pro and SaaS plan, and then we can go into a little sure. bit more about like the future of the industry and stuff like that. Cool. Um, so my first question is basically that like for a social media marketing agency owner that is starting out, they're going to the first 10, $20,000 per month. They're currently on the nine to seven or two, nine, seven dollar plan. What do you feel is like the biggest perk for them selling high ticket service to be able to upgrade to the pro slash SaaS plan? Essentially? Sure. Yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, I think that the big advantage is just additional revenue. That's super highly profitable, right? So, you know, uh, and also allowing them a couple of things. So th there's more revenue there. So look, just billing the software plus the utilization, you know, that, that's hundreds of dollars a month in free, essentially free money. So why wouldn't you do that, right? Um, ultimately, as you help your clients grow, they're going to they're gonna send more messages, they're going to send more emails, and you're going to make money off of all of those incremental costs. So that's a great thing. Um, I also think it gives you a lot more churn protection. So for example, it tends to be with high ticket items, there's, there's, there's a lot of high stakes, right? And if you ever get into a situation where maybe your clients call you and say, hey, I'd really love to dial back for a month or two. Now you have this thing to fall back on that's a lot less expensive that I think a lot of people, that will create a lot of stickiness and value. So worst case scenario, you always have that to fall back on. And that means you didn't get fired. It means you still have as a client and it makes it a lot easier for them to come back up later on into more of that high ticket environment, right? So it gives you that nice backstop. Um, so I would say that those are the two biggest reasons that I would look, I would look at. And then if you're also on, think about it also from the pitch perspective, you know, the best coaches I know, the guys who charge a hundred grand a year, none of them come out and say, hi, I'd love to coach you. It'll be a hundred grand a year because they'd be like, everyone would be like, no, thanks. You're nuts. They all have a much lower ticket start. Right. So if you look at the SAS play that the, I think that's ultimately a great advantage there. Because if you're trying to pitch something very expensive to start with, if I don't know you, it's just a big hill to climb, right? How do I know if you're worth that? How? Why should I say yes to you? Versus I think that it's better to deliver cheaper value and ultimately bring me up. And I think the SaaS play is a really easy and great way to do that. Yeah, yeah I completely agree. Like the rebuilding is huge, just that aspect, but also the aspect that you can have like an offer that you can downsell to people or like start smaller and, and then upgrade. But also like the reselling of like Yext and like even the like the WordPress that you can add on is huge as well to like improve oh, yeah. the stickiness as well. Um, like the A-B testing for the funnels is something that is huge actually, at least in my agency. I thought that was included in the other plans, but I use that all the time to be able to take like a landing page for like 5% to 20% and we just quadruple the lead for the client. It's actually huge. Um, yeah. And, and also the Stripe connection, like a small thing, just be able to show your clients that, you know, you have your invoices in there, just small things that just makes it awesome. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You'll, you'll make a lot more. If you're at the 297 plan and you have customers, you will easily make more than the $200 in upgrading, you know, yeah. if, and if not, you're just doing, you're doing something wrong. Cause 
it's it, there's so much value even again like you said in the reselling of the of the of the, of the phone calls and the sms's and the emails just a small markup there is huge and you make way more than 200 bucks off a good client yeah yeah i love that as well and even if you don't have like a like a markup on it you're still saving money on it than just paying for your clients text and so on and so forth as well but the markup is awesome. true uh, so when do you think it's like a good timing for somebody starting out like when do you think it's a good timing to upgrade to the SaaS plan. So I would just, you know, the the what I would do is I would get going, right? And the nice thing is, even if you wanted to do SaaS out of the gate, um, even though this will probably lose me a little money, you can actually start that on the 297, right? You can do a lot of that stuff manually to get going. And so I would go to 497 when you get to that place where it's like, okay, I've kind of got the model down. I understand what I'm selling, but now I just want to scale it better. I want to automate it. I want to make my life easier so I can focus on other things, right? So I would really just make sure you understand that the model is there. You understand how to scale that model. You understand that it's super profitable. You kind of get all of the mechanics behind it and you can implement it you know, manually a couple of times to just make sure you got it. And then that's when I would go into the pro because now you just automate it. You take that off your plate and then you can focus on the sales and making sure that every time you're doing your high ticket sale, you're also selling this in, in addition to that or you're using it as the low ticket sale in order to scale faster. Awesome. So basically like get your proof of concept, get some cash flow coming in and then upgrade. And then yeah. you kind of, you kind of secure that stickiness when you do that. So you're, you're basically saving money doing it anyways. Yeah. Basically. Absolutely. Absolutely. I, I would say, again, I always say, look, if you're, if you're paying us more than we're making you, you're just doing something wrong. Like that's literally all it is. Like you should be able to go out and make one sale, one client, one SaaS engagement right there and pay for the whole thing. Yeah, like the, the coolest thing when I started using high level was that I could tell people that, you know, we're not only like a lead provider, but we're like a deal provider now. We can actually help you with so much more than just sending you the leads, which is huge. Uh, exactly. Yeah. And I was like gluing everything together in the past, like, you know, having Calendly, like funnels and all of this. And I was like, can actually no. high level be better with all of this in one? And it is, it is better. And we can track no. everything from one place. It's truly awesome. Um, good stuff. Um Next question. So what do you think is like the, the main focus for a social media mar marketing agency owner now in 2023 and beyond, like to really set you apart, to be able to produce better results for yourself and for your clients and be able to scale your agency? Yeah. Especially? I mean, I mean, it's boring, but I, I really love the SaaSpreneur concept. I really think it's a scalable model. And I've seen it now across thousands of agencies. I mean, our biggest SaaSpreneur agency will do $10 million a year in revenue. And so, I mean... It's very telling as a model. And I think models matter more than anything. You need to create scalable models. And also the price point speaks to almost every small business. And you know whether you, we go into an official recession or not, the economy this year is not going to be the economy of last year. And so as a result, or the year before, you know, fundamentally, you, you're going to have to be challenged by this idea of you know, economic headwinds. So how are you going to answer back to that? And I think finding a model that is going to get people into your business easier and faster um, and in a more scalable, profitable way, that's going to be key. And I think that's what the SaaS model is all about. Awesome. And that agency who is making the 10 million, are they having like a, a service part of it and a SaaS part or are they like going? Well, that's just 10 million in revenue off the software alone. Oh, and that, and and the next one down is six million, and then I, I don't know the rest, but I mean, there's like a, how many how many millions are underneath that, and there's a bunch of them that are at a million. And the reality is, there's a mix of all types. Um, but I would the ten million folks, I think they're almost exclusively SaaS. Um, you know, there's some services in there, but not much. Uh, <clears throat> but again, it's all about. But but the reality is, I've seen it in every type. I've seen it in people that are heavy service focused, where they add the SaaS into the service. I've seen the other way where they'll do the SaaS first and then live the service later, which tends to be the better combo in my opinion. Um, I've seen it in every different way. I've seen it in big agencies, like people who have a thousand customers. I've seen people do it, you know, starting off um, their very first customer. It works at, across the board. So no matter what type of agency, no matter where you're at in your progression, it's something you can add in. And frankly, it just works. It just gives you a lot more revenue, a lot more stickiness. Awesome. It must be crazy for you to kind of see how all of this is kind of unfolding as you, I'm sure you like, or I know that you guys have been working super hard on this, but when you started, like, could you like envision how this would kind of play out or? Oh, no, <laughs> not at all. No, no, no. Yeah. And anybody who ever says they can is lying anyways. I mean, mm. what, what I think, again, I would say models matter. And what I think we got right was 
out of the gate, we realized that we weren't going to be experts at everything and that the true heroes were the agencies that we served. And by white labeling ourselves, I think what we enabled is for the, the agency to rise above and to be the person on stage and for them to be like the highlight, which is really what we always believe they should be because they're the ones truly providing the value. But what we didn't anticipate is the creativity of those agencies to go out and do amazing things that we could never imagine. And, and I will say, it's so funny. I, I still every day find new things I didn't know was happening. And many of them, I still don't even understand them incomplete because it's taken someone a lifetime of learning and experience in that niche or in that area or in that problem to fundamentally be able to then take out take high level add their knowledge and then solve for it so that creativity is insane and no i i could have never imagined it but it's a really cool thing yeah it is crazy and i i like to see like high levels as a blank canvas you can pretty much do so many things with it you can build automation in so many different ways you can apply it to so many different niches and so on and so forth it's really cool um but what was it that like kind of inspired you to start high level in the first place did you yeah was did you yeah so yeah I had a thousand small business customers at another SaaS app that I was running and they all told me the same thing. They wanted more customers. And so I said, oh, no problem. We'll go write some software for that. And we did. And a bunch of them bought it and we were really excited at first. And then two weeks went by and they all started canceling. And I was like, what the heck is wrong with you? Like you said, this stuff was amazing, right? And, th and then they would say, well, it is amazing, but we don't have time to learn it. We don't have time to like put it in our business. We don't, you know, we don't have time to understand it. And I didn't really know what to do at that point, but I got a call from a marketing agency and the marketing agency says, Hey, you know, we have a cust a co-customer in common. Um, I'd love to understand what you're doing for a customer. And so I got on a call and I remember being really hesitant to get on the call. I was like, I don't get it. This guy's not my customer. Why am I bothering? Why am I wasting my time? He's not paying me any money, but I got on the call. He was a super nice dude. So I got on the call and not only did he understand what we were doing, he bought it for all of his other agency clients. He gave us a bunch of good advice on how we could improve it. Two weeks later, he didn't cancel. He started introducing us to other agencies. And, and very quickly thereafter, what I started to realize is that the really uh, profitable, successful small business, they were working with an agency. They just wouldn't say that because no one ever says that. They never come out and say like, all the success is not my responsibility. I didn't do any of this. It's actually my agency. No, they come out and they say, it's all me. I'm a genius, right? So what we realized is the agencies make the difference between success and failure. And as soon as we knew that, we just threw, we stopped selling to small businesses entirely. We eventually transitioned them all out. And then we only worked with agencies because we knew that's where the, the real success would lie. Cool. Yeah. And, and like the white labeling is huge. I, I was so ecstatic when I found out about that, the white labeling stuff that I could like brand it my own and I can have an app and I did everything on the phone and have everything on my agency name, home service. And I could utilize that in my pitch deck on the sales calls. And it's like, I can present that as my own as our agency it's it's huge absolutely uh, yeah that's really cool um so what do you think is like something that will become more important now in the smme in the industry in the future and to be able to provide more and better souls for our clients like something that we're maybe not using right now but that will become bigger and more important in the future yeah. yeah i mean i don't know i'm pretty excited about all the ai stuff that i'm seeing um we're gonna have our version come out uh in q one. So you'll see our first version of AI copywriting come out. Um, I, I see this as, I see this as actually really positive because I think marketers have always struggled with this idea of like, how do I create, uh, you know, uh, unique content for my customer <clears throat> that's quality enough that people want to read it, but is also not the same for every single client. And I think AI sort of opens the door to that. It's also just another way to automate a task that had to be done it can do it well. And I think that we can, we can make it very contextual. So we can say, Oh, you're in the, you're in the blog post section. Great. Here's the click this button to create a blog post using AI. Oh, you're in the social media section. Great. Click this button to create a social media post using AI. Right. So I'm pretty excited about that. I think that's, that's a technology that's really got some likes to it. Awesome. And it feels like since you guys are building a software as well, it feels like you guys have to really be on the ball to kind of see what's going on, what's going to happen potentially in the metaverse or how are we actually, like how will we do advertising maybe in like only five years? Maybe everybody has like goggles on them or whatever it might be. So I assume that you guys are really like on the uh, ball yeah. trying to look you know into the funny? future too. Yeah. Yeah, it's it, it's, a, it's a good question. So, so on one hand, we absolutely do that all the time. But you know, we didn't get here by thinking we were the smartest people in the room. We got here really by listening to our customers. 
So what we, we really like to do is we, when new tech comes out, we play with it because it's fun. But what we really do is look at the marketers. We look at our customers and say, like, are they, yeah, this is cool. And maybe we see the potential and maybe we think it's a good idea, but like have have any of them translated it into the real world? Because a lot of times, you know, the the good idea when tried out in the real world is a failure because maybe people can't understand it or they can't afford it or it's not fast enough for them or whatever it may be. And so what we love about marketers is they're able to take the, the like the, the possible and make it real and, 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 and test it out in the world to see if it works. And we feel like our job is really just to follow their lead. And so when something is super successful, we need to jump on it, get that out, make it part of the app and just make it simpler and easier for them. And that's kind of what we do. Well, yeah, it makes complete sense, right? Yeah, like the perfect feedback loop for, for like, yeah, that. yeah that's awesome. Good stuff. We know and the so, smartest people in the room when it comes to marketing. Yeah, no, that must be must must be so much fun as well to be able to talk with agencies who are actually in the market, providing results for their clients and be able to speak with them. They're asking for something and then be able to build that for them and then be as the oh, yeah. I mean, to actually ask for something and get it. It's actually pretty crazy. Oh, yeah. I mean, well, and think about every other software product. You know, they have to deal with like dentists and doctors and lawyers and like all lawn care guys telling them what to do. And it's like, you know, I'm sure all those people are well-intentioned and I'm sure some of them are really great, but a lot of them are probably just throwing things up against the wall. The nice thing about working with marketers is that's all they do every day, right? And so when we when we hear from them, we, we really know they know what they're talking about. And I think we just get the best version of the idea or the best version of the, of the problem to be solved. Awesome, good stuff. And so what do you feel is like the biggest difference between a really big and very successful agency versus like an agency that are trying to scale or like an okay agency if that makes sense models okay. <laughs> the okay. model that you have will define everything and, and you can look outside the agency space and ask yourself you know look at businesses that scale and that have higher profit margins and i guarantee you they they have a better model and what i mean by that is you know is the product you're selling really easy to duplicate is the product you're selling have probably less customizations than other people right are the product is the product you're selling um how many human beings have to touch it in order for it to be something that's ready to go or something that works on its own right if you the model you're choosing really will define your success or failure because you know it's sort of like i always like to look at like cars and I, I, like and I, like if you look at like like tesla and you go and you price out a Tesla or you, and you price out one of their competitors' vehicles, what you're going to find is really simple. The amount of customizations from a competitor is significantly higher. There's more options, like more colors, interior, exterior, bells and widgets and all this stuff. But then when you look at the very bottom price tag, it's actually lower than Tesla is going to give you for a lot less options. And what does that result in? It just means that Tesla has more money at the end of the day because they have to make less combinations of vehicles. It's that simple. And it doesn't mean they're, it doesn't mean they have a lower quality product. It doesn't mean their customers are less satisfied. It doesn't mean any of those things. It simply means that as a business, they can scale better than their competitors in the same market. And I think agencies have that same dynamic. Some agencies have products that scale. And you know, we, this is why we like SaaS. We think SaaS is the answer to this for, for most agencies. But some agencies have a really good boxed product or a very good scalable model. And some people are custom trying to custom do everything. And then they're, unfortunately, their models just don't go that far. Yeah. Like in our agency, we, we we went away from the generalist side of things. We're not a full SaaS agency, but we're more so like a specialist. We only work with the specific industry. We only focus on one specific service so that we can keep it as simple as possible. If you figure out that something yeah. works for one client, we just copy paste it for more clients essentially. But yeah, that's interesting. It makes sense. It's like simplicity and then have it be able to scale it as well. And obviously it's the best yeah. type of thing that you can scale is the SaaS. It's, it's going to trump the service every time, but yeah. Yeah, it's it's got a lot it's got a lot lower you know costs associated with it, and and as a result, it's a lot higher profit margin, and it also just requires less people. I mean, I mean, I think the other problem with you know superhuman capital intensive businesses tend not to scale. I mean, if you look at accounting firms, it's not just the agencies, right? So like accounting firms, law firms, think about it. How many national law firms are there? There's very few, and even the the, the law firms that are large, they're partnership structures. And the partnership structures for a reason, because if they weren't, the, the average attorney there would just leave and go start their own firm, right? So the reason when why is that? It's because it's a purely human capital intensive business. 
and it just doesn't scale very well. And so I think marketing agencies in their traditional form have that same weak link, which is if you want to have a thousand customers, you're going to have a hundred employees or whatever. Um, and if you want to have, you know, a hundred customers, you're going to have 10 employees, but either way, it, you're not getting the economies of scale that you're going to get from other different business models. Yeah, that's really cool. Do you have any like golden nugget that you can share from the like really successful SaaS agencies to do the like niche in and try to fix like one specific market or do they like spread out and do like more generalized uh, approach? Yeah. So, I mean, what I would say is they don't overthink it. So, you know, I like to, if you go out and look at really successful software companies, I can show you software companies that have, you know, five features that do a hundred million in revenue and have tens of thousands of small business customers. The SaaS agencies I know that are successful, they, they focus on this idea. They focus on less is more. And that's the point, right? I always try to ask people like, if you had a hundred million in revenue, like would, would that be good for you? And I, I haven't met somebody yet who said no. And so I've said, well, then why, why are you overthinking it? Why are you trying to do so much? Why not take the things that work that create consistent value and stop there? Because ultimately what I find is the farther you try to go in creating more value beyond that, you just create this friction that is expensive for you. It's expensive for your client. And the clients eventually just don't want to pay that kind of money. And they'll say, thanks, but no thanks. You know, the $2,000 a month plus ad spend trick, it, it doesn't last very long in most cases because it, it not, not because the agency is not doing a good job, because the person can't imagine paying $2,000 to a person for anything for forever. It's just not what they do anywhere else in their business. So why would they do that with you? And it puts a big target on your back. And it just makes them think, how can I get rid of this person? Because they're so expensive. It's like Podium, right? They have like just a simple web chat widget and it's like worth, I don't know how much money they are worth, but that's like a- oh, Well, it's, 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 worth, it's worth billions, but, it's, it's, it, but, but, if, but forget valuation. In revenue terms alone, it's over a hundred million dollars in revenue. Yeah. And, and, and a simple solution like that can provide like real value for businesses as well. Like a lot of money. Real value. That's the thing. Yeah. It's not, it's not cheating. The business is that the, the, the feature set there <clears throat> drives more business and way more revenue than that, that solution costs. Right. And as an agency, look, it's not, it's not that you have to stop there. You can always do more, right. But start there, get your model right. And always know you're never going to lose a customer on that base. And then you can always build on that base, right? But not to have that base be solid, not to have that model be scalable. You're, I mean, you're never gonna, you're never gonna win. You're gonna be on the hamster wheel of, I got five clients, I lost two, I gotta get two more. Oh, I lost two more, I lost three. The hamster wheel just keeps going, mm. and you never get anywhere other than the, those five clients. It's a brutal, brutal existence. Yeah, love it. Awesome stuff. Um, cool. If it's okay with you now, I have some questions from the community as well that we can dive into. Great. Um, Let's do it. Awesome. Cool. So we had a question here from Hans uh, Lambo, and he asked, how do you see Go High Level and the agency world as a whole evolving in, in regard to artificial intelligence? Are there any plans on integrating like chat, GPT, or other AI systems that can help agency owners become more efficient? There you go. We'll see, we'll see you in a couple of weeks. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> That'll be out. That's, that's part of the, that's absolutely part of the plan. So yeah, I think those, those technologies, and again, what a wonderful example of something that put in the hands of a professional can create amazing outcomes, but put in the hands of the average person and you're just going to get a lot of garbage. But yes, we will absolutely have chat GPT um, uh, and GPT powered or three powered AI live in Q1. Awesome. That's exciting. Good stuff. Another question. Uh, Mahmoud uh, Junis, he's asking, how do you envision high level evolving in the next five to 10 years? And what role do you see the SMMA agencies playing in that evolution? Yeah, so I think this is what's great about being an agency. I think that the world of marketing changes constantly. And I think that in the future, I think agencies will be relied upon more for their expertise and more for their services than, than they have actually in the past. Because now I think they're broadening their horizon of what they're capable of doing. An agency doing it right, coming in can now do so much more than just run my ads and run away. Now they're showing me how to build my business. They're giving me the software that I need to actually build that business. They're creating a way bigger impact in what I'm doing. And I think that because I'm I'm looking for a partner that's going to care a lot more about me, I would much rather work with that agency and, and they have a bigger breadth of service, right? So the other thing is like, maybe they start here, but they can go all the way over here versus if I go to uh, more traditional vendors, 
they're just going to stick me in this one little thing. And if I ask for more, they're going to say, sorry, we don't do that. Agencies are much broader in their, in their offerings because they're trying to holistically try to create value and get me more customers and grow my business. And that's how they're thinking versus no, 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 no. I just provide this one little tool and that's all I do. And you have a nice day like that. I think really is going to help agencies thrive. Yeah, because the technology is evolving so fast and so quickly. And there's so many markets out there and so many type of business owners who have no idea. Like we're helping a lot of roofing and solar companies and they're way behind on the technology side of things. So they need like a middle yeah. hand, like that can help them with high level. And that's why high level is so awesome as well, because it, it has everything that you need. And then you can just use high level to solve basically all of the problems for your clients, which is crazy, actually. Yeah, it's really cool. Um, awesome. Um, all right. Another question from Mahmoud Yunus as well. What advice do you have for SMMA owners looking to grow their business and stand out from the competition and succeed in the industry? Go SaaS. Yeah, we basically <laughs> talked about it, right? Yeah. I mean, I mean, I mean, walk into a business and say, listen, you know, uh, my goal, I'm going to get you more customers. That's what I'm going to do and do it in a way that's really scalable for them. But by offering more than just your service, offering the technology, it's, I mean, it's an end-to-end -end solution, right? I mean, they, and think about it from a business owner's perspective. Do you really want to go to 10 people to get one problem solved, right? No. And you're busy, right? You're, I mean, if you're in the solar industry, you're up on a roof all day. You're trying to put solar panels on, a, on somebody's house. You're dealing with inspectors. You're trying to get, you know, you're trying to get the system operational on and on and on. You don't have time to monkey around with getting your next customer. You want to find somebody who can help you do that so you can focus on what you're good at. So as an SMMA agency owner, think of yourself as a holistic solution to your customer. And if you do that, I think you'll be incredibly successful because now you're, you're invaluable. You've just solved the problem. You haven't just provided me a piece of the solution. Hmm. Yeah, it's it's not only like the lead generation appointments, but it's like the software and the CRM and the automations, all of that, and the reputation management, the getting the reviews, which is huge as well for all of the local companies. A so whole life cycle, that. right? Yeah, it's and, well, and, and and you know the other big thing people haven't even talked about is um, the referral management. I mean, we call it affiliate management. What do you think that is? You know, hey, hey, Mister Customer who just bought us thirty thousand dollar, forty thousand dollar solar system from us. If you recommend one of your friends and one of them comes and buys, we'll cut you a check for 500 bucks. Just fill out this form and we'll shoot an email out with your affiliate link out for you automatically. That's in every sub account right now. And you can do that. I mean, hello, no ad spend. I mean, and if I, if I buy solar, do you think maybe I know other people who have the money and who have the mindset who are likely to want to buy that product as well? Heck yeah, of course I do. And they know other people and they know other people and they know other people. You don't need to go to Facebook. You don't need to go to Google to find them. You can just work through your existing customer base. Yeah, I feel like that is something not a lot of agency owners are utilizing, which is could be like, or it is like no. the, easy, the easiest win you can do is like utilize your Easiest. Career. Yeah. Just send like a text blast. I mean, think about, I mean, look, if, if you sit down and you ask yourself, okay, in the last month, what have I bought that I normally don't buy? And then why or how did I think to learn about buying it? I guarantee you're going to happen across at least one thing that one of your friends or family told you about that you didn't know about. That's just how it works. That's how we, we're a social species. But if you can incentivize people to talk about something, right, that they already like anyways, I mean, you're just yeah. going to blow it up and you don't have to pay Facebook for that. You can just ask people, pay your customers, right? Like it's, it's, it's crazy. It's a great strategy. Yeah, it's free and it's a lot more powerful because people trust people they know and Watching yes. ads online still works, but like it's so much more powerful if you hear it from a friend or from a neighbor or from. Dude, a, there is no way in, on the planet that yeah. you don't buy you you don't buy more stuff that your friends recommend by percentage than yeah. some ad you see. Just yeah. you know it. I know it. It's how I do. That's how I do things too. In fact, I I bought solar and uh, recently, and the reason I bought solar wasn't because it was an ad. It was because I was on a farmer's market and I, they had a booth and they seemed nice and they were local. And then some other person who was at the farmer's market was like, oh, I love these guys. They installed my solar too. And right off the back of that, I was like, okay, well, they must be great. And boom, I bought solar. Yeah. And and what's fun about that type of advertising as well, like with, with the referrals, is that, is that you can incentivize the people who refer business to you, but you can also incentivize you know, give a special deal to the person that they are pro promoting it to essentially. So right. they, yeah. yeah. So and can, and it keeps so going, stuff. right? Because yeah. the person that gets referred, they can refer people too. It just keeps growing. Yeah. It becomes exponential. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. 
good, good stuff. Cool. Okay, another question. Daniel Jan, what are some projects and potential features we should expect in the future of high level? Oh gosh, I mean, I mean, remember we only plan a quarter out. So there's a ton of stuff. I mean, you've got AI, AI coming down. You've got email A-B testing that's coming out. You've got um, uh, payment gateway support to authorize.net and NMI, which will open up hundreds of merchant, uh, different merchant providers. Um, gosh, what else is, I've got the AI stuff that's coming out. I'm just, I have to go look at my list. Um, and this is all just happening like this quarter, right? right? Um, we're working on internationalization, which is going to be huge. Um, webinar, we have a bunch of uh, stuff coming out for the calendaring. So you can do like webinars, you can do, uh, you can do group booking. So like class booking, or you can do booking where you like, if you need two people or multiple people to be booked as a single appointment, because they're like a team, you'll be able to do that, which I think will be really awesome. Um, so there's just a ton of stuff coming out all the time like that. And that's just one quarter's worth of work. I mean, we're, we're I mean, we're, by the end of this quarter, we'll have a whole nother list. Awesome. And by merchants, do you mean like alternatives to Stripe or something like that? Or yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Because that is something. A lot uh, yeah, we have a big demand. We have a big demand that. for that. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, and a lot yeah, of that'll be out in through... two weeks. Oh, that's awesome. That's awesome. And we have a lot of people going through the course as well from all over the world, the US and UK and Europe, but also a lot of people from, from India who have problems just like signing up. So that was also like a common question. They they really want to yeah. sign up, but they can't. There's some problem with the bank or whatever it might be. That might be something that the crypto market will uh, will change in the future, but uh, uh, maybe, that's another maybe. discussion. We'll see. <laughs> we'll see. Yeah. It's not looking too good right now. Yeah, for sure. All right. Um and then you also had a question, what is your plan to take high level to the next level? <laughs> well, this, this is a great thing. It, it's not about me, right? It's about it's about us. It, and I think that the thing that we've cracked the code on, if anything, is how to partner with our customers in a way where everyone's benefiting. And so my goal is really simple. I, I want to get this model out to more people because I think it's a big world. There's a ton of opportunity. And we're really doing something unique and different, right? We're enabling people who for the longest time have at best gotten affiliate commission from a software company to be software companies. And software is just a tool, but it's a necessary tool. It's a vital tool to help customers grow and, and, and to help serve your customers. And so if you can own it, monetize it and, 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 and profit from it, right? Like, how is that not a beautiful thing? And so for me, it's just, how do we get this message out to more people? Because I think we have the right model. I mean, every customer we have, you know, I would say the same to them. Like, if you're not making more money from us than you're paying us, like you're doing it wrong. Like, I truly think we're making money for the vast majority of our customers and we will someday make it money for all of them way more than they pay us. And that's an awesome thing. And that's what I want. I want to, I always say I want high level to be a $10 billion company. And what I mean by that is I want my customers to be getting 9 billion in revenue and I want us to get a billion in revenue. And I think that's the idea. We're here to share. We're here to help people grow. We want our customers to be successful. Yeah. They're like one mantra that I live by is like the one who provides the most value wins. And it's always true. Um, and um, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it is, and I feel like there's not really anybody else in the market right now who provides more value than the Go High Level does. Um, like just a simple fact, like when you run a campaign in our agency, like in the past when we had all of these different softwares and we were trying to do A/B testing, we had one tool for the calendar, we had one tool for the survey, one tool for the landing page, and then you're trying to glue everything together with another tool to test everything. And within High Level, you just have everything in one place, and yeah, it's huge. It's huge. Good stuff. Cool. Totally agree. Totally agree. Awesome. Okay. Another question. I have two more questions here. So the the this one is from Paul and he's asking, do you have any hobbies outside of work that helps with leadership skills or simply become a better leader or entrepreneur oh. overall? <laughs> uh, ooh, well, yeah. probably not. Um, you know, I, I like skiing, but I don't think that necessarily makes me a better leader. Um, and, you know, I would say that leadership comes from the top. So I just always try to represent the type of leader that I want other people to be and try to, especially when it comes to values or decision-making or just directional, right? Um, because I feel like that's how you have the most impact as a leader is you have to get out there and lead. 
you know, you can't, I mean, it, books are helpful and um, activities like this are helpful. I mean, I enjoy meeting my, I would say I enjoy meeting my customers. My biggest hobby is going out to events and seeing people and meeting people and learning about what they're doing to be successful. Um, and I guess I would say that makes me a better leader probably because my people see me out there doing that and it's not easy and you spend a lot of time on airplanes and all of that. And so they feel like, well, if he's willing to go do that, you know, maybe I can get on a customer call or two and it's not going to hurt me. So I think really it's about leading from the top that matters more when it comes to really kind of helping your people and creating good leadership style. Awesome. Yeah. And I know that for a fact, like the, the positive vibe from the go high level team is like, it's from like just being able to interview you and sitting here. And I know that you're on a lot of like out there and showing your face and a lot of people in the, on the, of the co-founders, but also if you just contact like the support chat or whoever it might be, there's always a positive notion or like a positive vibe when you talk to people. And I'm, I agree. Yeah. They're we have great from people. the top. Yeah. Really, really great people. Awesome. Um, final question. What advice do you have, like general advice for aspiring entrepreneurs looking to start one and grow their own business? Because I'm sure you've been through a bumpy ride to be where you are today. So do you have any like specific yeah. principles or values or anything that can guide new entrepreneurs? Yeah, I mean, I, I think that the I think the idea here is that, you know, just realize that there, there are no straight paths. Um, you will you will fail a lot before you succeed. Um, and it's it's about continuing the journey more than it is finding the right answer. And I think this is where people get hung up. They think that, that they have this plan and they execute the plan and then something goes wrong and they think, well, gosh, that just means I'm a failure. But I think in reality, that just means you've learned something new. Fundamentally seeing failure as a learning opportunity, but just realizing like you just keep moving, like you just keep pushing forward. And if you do that, you will achieve success. I mean, I have many, many companies that we tried to start that failed, that didn't work, that were tiny successes or no successes and everything in between. Um, and fundamentally it all led, it led me here. And I, I, and I wouldn't be here without those experiences. I mean, I, I, I once, I once thought of myself as a, a millionaire and then I lost it all. Um, and it wasn't Bitcoin. Um, it, it was, um, I was a partner in a business and, um, and I, you know, I had, I picked the wrong partner and it cost me 12 years of my life, but, fundamentally, as tragic as that was, I, I think it taught me a great deal. And were it not for that experience, I don't think I would be here today. In fact, I know I wouldn't be here today. Um, and so I just think it's about remembering that you just need to continue to push forward. And sometimes, you know, you have to take a break or sometimes you have to like, you can't do it full time. Maybe you have to go get a job and like fund it on the side or do it at nights and weekends or whatever. But, you know, just don't cease forward mo momentum of any of some kind. Um, and I think eventually you will find success. Awesome. Love it. Hey, Sean, thank you so much for jumping on the call. I know that the community will love it. Absolutely. Appreciate the time. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thanks for having me. Bye for now. All right. So that is the interview with Sean. Hopefully you enjoyed it. I enjoyed it a ton. He's an awesome guy and he's building some great things with High Level. And if you want to learn more about how to implement High Level for your own agency or how to transition over to the SaaS model, you can go to my website and join the free social media marketing agency course. It's 100% free. We have a free community and free weekly Q&A calls as well. And I cover everything from A to Z, how to start running, grow your agency from zero to at least $10,000 per month. Obviously, we cover the high level side of things, but we also go over six sales, marketing, promotions, the fundamentals, how to select a niche, and so on and so forth. So definitely make sure that you click the link in the description, go over to the free social media marketing agency course, and then check out the entire course there. And I hope to see you there soon. Let's go. Bye.